So let's talk about the course agenda next. This is just an example of one day within our seven day coaching course. Notice in this example, we're starting at eight o'clock and we're finishing at four o'clock in the afternoon. In the left hand side, we've got the subjects that we'll be covering. And on the right hand side, an estimate of the time that each of these sections will take. You remember when we covered metaphors earlier that I like to start telling a metaphor and then leave it, finish it around 80%, 85%, leave it as a cliffhanger and then only finish the metaphor and close it in the afternoon or just before we actually finish up for the day. So that's why you'll notice that we've got the welcome and the opening of metaphors in the beginning and then closing metaphor just before the finish at 4 p.m. Of course, noticing the timings, everything is not always going to be nicely 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and so forth. These are just rough ideas of times that are allocated for each of these areas. You'll also notice that between 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock, we've got two hours, of course. And I mentioned earlier that ideally you want to have your training 40 minutes to 60 minutes. Now that's as course content. During these subjects that we cover, they are not actually purely information being driven into the students. A lot of this actually is about discussion, a lot of exercises, a lot of demonstrations. So whilst it looks like it's a full two hours, it's not actually two hours of information that's being driven into the audience. Also, one of the rules that I have in my courses Although we have these set break times, at any point in time, if somebody feels that they need to get up to get themselves a coffee or get some water or pop to the loo, they're more than welcome to do that. Now, the course agenda is really useful for, you know, certainly a couple of reasons for sure. Let's say hypothetically, we finished and I've done the core competencies, but actually it's now only half past nine. So we finished a half an hour before our actual break time. I can then ask myself, how is it that one, we either finished very early or let's say maybe we overran and it was 10 o'clock break time, but we actually haven't even done the core competencies yet. Then I could notice, hey, we're actually an hour behind. Now, this is useful information for future trainings. How is it that we actually didn't stick to the timings? Was the timing unrealistic? Was it that maybe we spent too much time in Q&A? Was it that potentially we raced through the subject very quickly and the audience was not very engaged? So all of this is feedback for us as a trainer. The agenda is also really, really useful to make sure that we stay on track and that we cover all of the subjects that we need to cover during the course. Remember we spoke earlier about opening and closing. We said how important it is to have a great opening and a great closing. And then whatever happens in the middle and during the training can be adapted a little bit so that we can sandwich it nicely within our opening and closing. That doesn't mean to say skip out anything because certainly if you're delivering a course and there's key elements that need to be delivered, what that means is that there's times when maybe we can drop out a bit of Q&A to save some time or we can shorten exercises a little bit or take out a particular game that we're going to play or otherwise maybe put in some more Q&A, play an extra game, etc. depending on what was happening during the day and what was the time schedule. So this is just an example of what a course agenda might actually look like. So consider your training and go ahead and, and set up your own agenda. You'll find that certainly the first couple of times as you deliver your training, you're going to tweak your course agenda. You're going to tweak your timings and you might find that you've got some extra time or less time in different areas. And maybe even you might change some subjects around because they just a little bit too much time or take just too little time to actually fit in between your two different breaks. 
Example, if we got to 10 o'clock and I hadn't done the core competencies and then had to now put in the hours core competencies plus the hour of history of coaching, then that will already take us through until 10 past 12 and then we haven't even done the why coaching or the coaching models. So looking at the agenda, it helps to keep us on track, helps the trainer to be able to moderate the group in such a way where if example q a gets out of hand or becomes too long should i say then you can actually shorten it and you can bring the training back on track so go ahead create your own course agenda and don't be surprised if it does change as you go through your training and deliver it a number of times that's normal and natural and then you'll find your sweet spot